Hello everyone and welcome to the last part of the network security introduction. This is part number seven where we'll be looking at the different kind of attackers. So the reason for looking at different kind of attackers is really to understand better who is our enemy and when we know our enemy and his motivations, abilities and resources then we can also build a better defense. So I will go briefly through six different groups of attackers, namely insiders, cyber criminals, script critters, grey hats, hacktivists and nation states and these have uh, six very different groups. So what we can see in the overview here is we can see that uh, insiders is a small group working either for revenge or profit. We can see that cyber criminals who are that's a large group and they are mainly interested in doing things for profit. We can see hacktivists who are more looking for, for curiosity or having a political goal um, recognition. We are seeing the smallest group I have put here is the script kiddos. So the guys sitting down in the basement um, drinking cola, eating pizza and trying to do what they read off the net. And usually they don't get, get anywhere with that. Then we have the group of grey hats, which are again more for curiosity and recognition. And we have a large group of nation states. So that's usually states spying on each other for curiosity or revenge. So understanding if, if your most um, potential attacker would be a nation state or for profit or a hacktivist is quite an important part of your defense. So insiders are trusted people with a malicious intent. So that could be the guy who is being fired from his work and still have access. Um, they have pretty privileged access and often knowledge of relevant systems. Um, so this can be motivated by revenge, for example, this guy being fired or being uh, disagreeing with someone. Uh, it can also be motivated by profit because he can get a lot of money by sharing data and knowledge with someone from the, from the outside world. Um, when it comes to abilities and insiders can have extensive knowledge of the systems, uh, including knowledge of vulnerabilities, and he might have skills and permissions to hide his activities but he often doesn't have many resources, so often he will be working alone. On the other hand, he will have access to system resources. We have the cyber criminals who are really the, the professionals, I would even say often organized professionals. They are often organized in groups of hackers and they have a business approach, so they're in it for the money. Um, it's completely financially motivated. Um, they. There are many different groups and there is a wide variety of the technical and skills um, and uh, if they are organized enough they are willing to recruit or hire people with additional competences. Uh, this is often done through underground networks and you will learn much more about that in the, um, in the basic part of this course. Um, when it comes to resources they have plenty of resources available in terms of money, equipment and manpower. So it's a, it's a strong group to be up against. And we have also seen how they have been able to launch, for example, a sophisticated um, ransomware attacks. The other script kidders, which are the novices with low skills and a very limited understanding of the technical consequences of what they do. So often they find something on the internet and they try it out. They are usually just curious. They don't have many technical resources. Uh, they have, um, um, low technical competence and not very many resources. They are often not a part of a larger network, but they're sitting in a basement operating uh, on their own. Then we have the grey hats, which are the old hackers. So often they are, they are skillful hackers and, and usually they don't have a, have a criminal intent. So they are main, mainly curious and, and they are not likely, likely to do, for example, sabotage. Um, often they are specialized and they uh, can be part of networks with ex information exchange between them, which can make them quite capable. Um, they mainly work alone, it is part of this knowledge exchange, so they don't have many resources, but they often have skills and they often have access to some kind of equipment. And the activist, which is a big group, you might know the most fam famous, and that's also the picture I put here, which is Anonymous. They are often in groups. Um, often distributed geographically and with varying, varying technical skills. Um, they are often motivated by ideology or political agendas. 
Um, often religion is not a motivation in, in itself, but there can be a, a, a political or ideological reason for, for wanting revenge for something. Um, we have, regarding the abilities, we have seen that they, they have, um, or it's very, it's very different from group to group, but you will see that some groups, uh, groups have quite skilled members, and again, Anonymous is a good example of that. Uh, the amount of resources varies a lot from group to group. There will be some which have very few resources and some who has a lot of resources and plenty of manpower. Um, we also know that some of them, such, yeah, um, such as Anonymous, also have botnets and other uh, important resources available. Then there is, at last but not least, nation states, which are countries. Um, so they are known, uh, we know that Nation states or representatives uh, have tried to perpetrate everything from industrial espionage or military activities to having a nationwide, atta nationwide attacks in the cyber arena. Um, so the motivations can be different. There can be revenge, it can be intelligence, or it can be political and military gains. Um, we know that many nation states have substantial presence in cyberspace and, and have highly skilled experts. And we also know that many of them have a lot of resources. Uh, I would also say here that nation states is of course a very different thing than, than some of the cyber criminals. So where cyber criminals, okay, there are cyber criminals who have a specific target because they can earn a lot of money on that particular target, but often nation states will be, will not shoot to everything and then try to catch something like the spam mails or the, the ransomware which is running on a lot of computers, but they are really targeting a specific a specific goal and, and trying to find all the vulnerabilities. So in that sense, being being a victim of a nation state is very different than being a victim a victim of some uh, crim criminals who just have an economic gain. And that was the final part of this presentation. So now please do quiz number six. Thank you very much.